Hey, what's going on, guys? Dots here, and today I'm bringing you a beginner guide on dailies, weeklies, and world bosses worth doing in BDO. One of my favorite things about BDO as a game is the fact that it's a sandbox game and none of the dailies and weeklies are required, but they still do provide some benefit to you and your account. And so I wanted to discuss today some of my favorite dailies and weeklies that I like doing in BDO, and so that you can just see them and decide for yourself if they're worth adding into your routine. So kicking this guide off really quick, we are going to be talking about the Jatina Guaranteed Pen Accessory Dailies and the Guaranteed Pen Armor Weeklies. Now, if you don't even know what I'm talking about with Guaranteed Pen uh, Accessories and Armors, I have guides for both of them that I can link in the description below that I've made. But to just kind of summarize them up, by doing certain quests that you get from the old new manager Jatina, who can be found at these stables in any major city, you are able to get guaranteed pen armor, weapons, and one accessory of your choice. And so you do not have to go through traditional RNG enhancement to get these pieces, but you do need to do certain daily and weekly contents to make sure that you get the materials to actually be able to do this. So by talking to Jatina and clicking main quest, there will be a bunch of quests listed in here um for the weeklies and dailies it will indicate next to it if it's a weekly or a daily i do not have either of them right now because i've done both of them already so to apologize for not being able to showcase that but by talking to jatina you can get both of those uh, that, that daily and the weekly uh the weekly basically you have to turn in a latent aura from a boss that you will then get boss crystals for that you need to make the reform stones uh which are just basically upgrade stones for your weapons or armor that allow you to rank it up towards pen while if you do the dailies you get these things called burning moonlight blackstone powder which again is another material that you need to combine with a bunch of other things to create the items that you need to be able to upgrade your accessory so doing these is extremely important uh the next thing that i recommend just like a nice little daily to make a little bit of extra money is the lara shake daily so if you come over to lara here in Hydel and talk to her you can get her quest for uh dailies uh lara's great discovery and bread you just talk to her and she will offer if you just give her a certain type of dough back she can give you a scorched fragment now these are really really good because what you can do with these scorched fragments is you can actually combine them with uh five mano stones which you can get from an npc in velia uh over here um you can find her over here's the jeweler and velia i believe her name i don't remember it off the top of my head um but it is Marce marcella in velia you can get five mana stones from her you can then buy 100 pure titanium crystals off of the MP, as well as 10 Essence of the Sun. And if you combine the Essence of the Sun, the titanium crystals, the five Mano Stones, and your 10 shards that you got from the daily, you can actually create a Manos necklace, which sells for quite a bit of money on the marketplace. So it's just a way to kind of inject some cash flow into your, uh, you know, into your account every 10 days whenever you do complete that daily. Now, the next daily and weekly that I recommend doing is going to be the life skill quest. This is obviously only if you're into life scaling. So what you can do is come over here to Liana. Again, she can be found in most major cities. And when you do main quest here, so he has a bunch of weeklies related to various life skill activities that are worth doing. And if you talk to her and get these, you can get these Floramos petals, which allow you to get a secret book of Florins if you combine them with Liana's catalyst. So these petals, plus if you again talk to her again, go to the shop and get the catalysts. Um, these basically give you really, really, really big boost to your life skill experience and mastery, which is really beneficial for life skilling. Um, if for some reason though you do that and you decide like, oh, I don't really want that, you could always just get 3 million gold with these gold bars. But I do recommend the Secret Book of Floor and it really does help a lot. Uh, another weekly quest that I recommend doing is going to be the Pity Potion Weekly. So for those of you who do not know, I do have a guide coming out about this soon, but there are infinite potions in Black Desert Online. So there are regular potion consumables that you have that will restore your health or will restore your resource of choice. Now, there's potions in the game. There are very rare items that you can get that are infinite potions. So they accomplish the same thing as regular potions, but obviously because they're infinite, they never run out. So you never have to buy potions ever again. You never have to be worried about being uh, frugal with your potions. You can just use them as much as you want. Um, but 
to get these is extremely difficult because you have to farm some very rare items in order to get these but bdo did add a system into the game where if you collect the call we call them pity pieces if you collect a hundred of the pity pieces you can then combine them to make the full piece that you are looking for again i'm going to have a guide coming out about this soon but basically what you need to do uh for the weekly is that if you go to the node manager of any um of any of the nodes that are the area that you're farming in for the potion pieces uh you can find a quest there where if you kill its thing it's three thousand of the monsters that you would be killing anyway to try to farm for the potion piece you end up getting five of those pity pieces so it is absolutely worth doing if you are farming for the infinite potion now, the next thing that I want to talk about is the Stone Tail Horse Ranch dailies. Now, this is going to be a little bit later uh, for some people. Obviously, you're not going to be doing this right off the bat. So, if you come over here to Stone Tail Ranch, you can do some dailies over here that allow you to get materials for your T9 Dream Horse as well as your T10 Dream Horse. So, if you are in the process of working on that and you do need some more mats, this is a really good way to get some extra ones for just doing some really easy daily quests. And you also get some training experience along the way uh the next thing i want to talk about is the barrier of infestation weekly and i'll put some pictures up on the screen to show this this is a weekly quest again it'll be a little bit later in the game for you guys definitely post season um but this is a really good thing to do once you can go onto the elvia servers basically these will allow you to get one ap and one dp for doing a solo boss challenge so basically you need to do this quest line to unlock the challenge and then once you unlock the challenge which i'll show here you have to do seven quests and you will be able to get the extra ap and dp so it's a really good way to get more um to get more power onto your account very similarly to adventure logs if you don't know what those are again i have a guide linked in the description below now that pretty much covers the dailies and weeklies that i like doing at the moment um but there are also world bosses that are absolutely worth doing too in black desert and if you don't know what a world boss is it's exactly what it sounds like it's just a big boss that spawns out in the world not necessarily tied to a dungeon or an instance at all and at the moment there are five bosses that i personally like doing so number one is going to be vel vel spawns out in the middle of the ocean so you're going to want to have somebody probably take you out here to the heart of the ocean where vel does spawn i personally highly recommend having a vel alt just a random character that you take out here you drop in the freaking water and then whenever vel spawns you log onto that character hop onto a group member's boat and then do the actual kill of vel then you can res your character swap over to your main and then basically when you get the reward for killing vel it ends up going into your black spirit safe so you can then just open it on your main but why do i recommend doing this it is because you can get the bis alchemy stone vel's heart this gives you a lot of passive bonuses as well as three ap and is your best in slot alchemy stone so it is something that you are going to want to make sure that you are doing um if you don't want to buy it that if you don't want to do it that way though you could always just buy it straight up off the mp but that will run you about 13 billion silver at least on na now similarly to vel we also have garmoth so garmoth is another boss that spawns that we again we want a lot of hearts in this game and so garmoth we also want to get his heart too similarly to vel's heart but Garmoth's heart will serve a little bit of a different purpose. So Garmoth's heart can be used in two different ways. Number one, it can be put on your awakening weapon, allowing it to have two additional gem slots, which opens up a lot of possibilities for your character's gem combinations. And then the second thing it does is that you can add it to your sub weapon to turn it into a fiery version of your sub weapon. And what that will do is allow your weapon to have additional sub stats on it and some extra bonuses that are very, very strong. So the garmoth heart is worth getting actually twice so definitely a boss worth looking into now the next one that i want to talk about speaking of garmoth i feel like it's a perfect segue is is karanda so karanda basically will give you a light version of garmoth's uh garmoth's heart very similarly it allows you to put only one gem though on your awakening weapon and it does give you a small amount of substats so if you have not gotten the garmoth heart yet karanda's heart is a really good one to farm and use as a style gap until you can acquire the much desired garmoth heart now there's only two more bosses i'd recommend looking into 
uh one is going to be nuver so nuver will spawn over here um the reason i recommend doing nuver is because again talking about the garmuth heart you can get certain scales that come from nuver that you can actually turn into an npc that is a quest for a guaranteed garmuth's heart so if your rng has been really bad at garmuth you can continually do the nuver boss over and over again get the scales and then turn them in to that npc i will link a guide for that quest in the description below so you can take a look at that and if you again if you haven't been able to get the garmoth heart and you want to do another boss to help guarantee it the nuver boss is a really good way to do it now the final boss that i'm going to recommend doing and this is going to be a little bit in the future from the release of this video is going to be kudum so kudum is going to drop we don't know exactly all the details of it yet but you know just like we have the heart of karanda that acts like a light version of garmoth for the awakening weapon the kudum boss is going to act as a light version of garmoth for your sub weapon so it's going to give you some small bonuses on your sub weapon again just like how karanda gives you a little bit of bonus on your awakening weapon so Again, if you've not been able to acquire the Garmoth Heart, you would use um, you would use Karanda as a stopgap on your Awakening Weapon, and then in the new Kudum item as a stopgap on your Sub Weapon. At the time of recording this video, we don't know all the details quite yet, but I do believe it is a like just like a like a lighter version of what comes from the Garmoth Heart. So it's definitely going to be worth doing if you have not acquired that yet. Now, guys, on that note, that is going to be it for me covering my recommended dailies, weeklies, and world bosses for Black Desert Online. Do you have a favorite daily or weekly that I have not mentioned here in this video? Is there a world boss that you think is worth doing that I didn't mention? Let them let me know in the comment section below so that new players can take a look at that and see and potentially add that to their routine. And remember, guys, none of these things that I mentioned here in this video are required. Just some things that I recommend considering looking into and seeing if it's something that you want to add to your daily and weekly routine. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it a lot if you left a like on it. If you have any questions about these things, please leave a comment below. And for more Black Desert Online beginner guides, please hit that sub button as well as hit the bell to keep those notifications on. So thank you all so much for stopping by today. I do very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video.